We're fighting for a kingdom. We're not going through what we're going through just for the hell of it. We're fighting for a kingdom. We're fighting for everlasting life. We're fighting for righteousness to rule once again on the earth. We're fighting for our power, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, to set things back up in the proper order. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Kakadash, the bonds to the apostles and the LG and Mishra, rule well, teach well, be a great example to us, younger brothers, and peace and blessing, salutations to the hopeful lake out there pushing his word and truth and in sincerity across the four winds in the name of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, pushing to get up out of here. Shalom to the hopeful lake, the believers, the listeners that have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. You know, what I want to go into, you know, we're dealing with, you know, before the glory. All right. Dealing with the topic of before the glory, you know, because we understand that the scriptures, you know, prophesy, you know, of a great glory to come, you know, for the elect, you know, of Israel. All right. Beginning with those men, the 144,000, you know, and the rest of the one third men, women, and children. All right. Who were predestined. You know, to come out, you know, of darkness, you know, and come back into the light, man, which is Yahweh Shai, you know, through faith and obedience. Now, I want to read Sirach, I mean, Sirach, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, you know, because at the end of the day, as men and women, we are now learning our roles and our duties according to the righteousness of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. And that comes before the glory, you see. This is a process. Before we get to the glory, there's there's a process, you know. This is um Sirach, it's like Ecclesiastes twelve and thirteen. It said, "Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High, keep His commandment, for this is the whole duty of man." You see, now we understand as men, you know, why are we here, you know, as Israelite men. All right, we are here to forward. The agenda, all right, of our of of our power in the earth, you know, and Yahweh Shai was the greatest example that he came, all right, when he came as Yahweh Shai, all right, he had the mindset of forwarding, you know, the Father's agenda in the earth, you see, and now we'll forward the agenda of Yahweh Shai in the earth, man, you know, which they have the same agenda, and that's. You know, to run existence and righteousness, man. And we're coming back to that understanding. We understand our duty now. You see, you have, you know, a lot of men talking about their purpose, you know, which as a man, you know, being on, on, on your purpose as far as, you know, understanding, you know, you need, you know, to be on point, you know, to take care of the household. But how much more spiritually to take care of the household of Yahweh Bashi Shah? And ultimately to take care of existence, you know, under Yahweh Shah. You see, we have a we have a, a much higher purpose than of this worldly realm. And we have came, you know, to that understanding as men. Alright, because you go into that word duty. Alright. This is duty from the Elam Line, and it says obligatory service. Alright, we're obligated to this, man. This is why we we were created, man. The sons of God was created for the purpose, you know, of establishing righteousness in the earth, man. You know, and we understanding it. All right, said so that which ought to be done, also the force of that which is morally right. You see, hence proper and just. You see, so now, all right, we're in a mind frame, you know, that hey, righteousness is the way to go. You know, we're not curious, you know, in the ways of wickedness anymore. Esau Edom showed us the example of how far out of hand, you know, the earth can get, you know, being ran in wickedness. You see? So now, all right, we have a mind frame. All right, now we have a, a balanced mind frame when it comes to judgment, you know, even with judging with the law. So now we're balanced. We're becoming fully balanced, you know, to be those eternal judges, man. You see? And Yahweh Shai, he was that example, you know, and he finished his course, you see. But just to um, go 
go into that some more. Now, when you go into um, Wisdom of Solomon, all right, Uh, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, all right, verse 18. It says, but thou, master in thy power, and this is speaking of the Most High, you see, because he's perfectly balanced in how he judges the earth, man, because there's, you know, particular situations where we, you know, think judgment should come swift, you know, where we think, you know, judgment should be extreme, you know, and the Most High, you know, he, he lets things, you know, play out, you know, according to his liking because why he's a, a perfect balance you know power and that's what we're groomed to be you know being groomed to be it says but thou master in thy power judges with equity and orders and ordereth us with great favor for thou mayest use power when thou wilt yeah so the most high you know he can just he can he can he, he can erase existence if you wanted to and just start it over man you know that's the power that he has, man. You see? But he uses what? Equity, man, which is righteousness, man. All right? It says, but um, by such work, thou hast taught thy people that the just man should be merciful and has made thy children to be of a good hope that thou givest repentance for sins. For if thou didst punish the enemies of thy children and the condemned to death with such deliberation, giving them time and place where thy, whereby they might be delivered from their malice with how great circum, um, spec, uh, circum, circumspection didst thou judge thy own son unto whose fathers thou hast sworn and made covenants of good promises. You know, so it's saying, you know, the most high, all right, he could, you know, just easily make, just bring torment on Esau. You know, it's a light thing for the most high to judge, you know, a whole nation of people, you know, that's against his people. You see? Well what what we're seeing is the most high, you know, he's showing what? Long suffering. That's what we're being taught, long suffering, you know, with particular things. Now in the kingdom, you know, it'll never get this far out of hand. You know? But we what we'll understand, you know, uh judgment, you know, especially after those thousand years when Esau was moved, removed. You know, he's exterminated. You know, we're going to understand, you know, the, the full concept of judgment. It ain't all about just seeing nations suffer, you know. But it's about, about them to learn righteousness, man, which we'll get it. It says, matter of fact, let's get it and go back to it. When you go to Isaiah, all right, 26, because the whole purpose, you know, of enforcing the laws is for, all right, people to learn righteousness, man, you know. It said this Isaiah 26 and 9. It says, with my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yeah, with my spirit within me, I will seek thee early. Yeah, and that's the mind frame that the elect have came to. You know, we desire a righteous kingdom now. We desire, you know, a righteous way in the earth. It says, for when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. You see, it's all about the earth learning righteousness, man. But first, the leaders, the judges, you know, of Israel, all right, the future kings, joint heirs with Yahweh we had we had to come into a particular understanding of judgment and our duty and our purpose, you know. So, going back to Wisdom Solomon 12, all right, and 19, and it says, what started at 20 says, For if thou didst punish the enemies of thy children and the condemned to death with such deliberation, giving them the time and place whereby they might be delivered from their malice, with how great um, cir uh, circumspection didst thou judge thy own son to, whom, to whose fathers thou hast sworn and made covenants of good promises. Therefore, whereas thou didst chasten us, thou scourges I our enemies a thousand times more to the intent when we judge we should carefully think of thy goodness and when we ourselves are judged we should look for mercy you see so this whole 
thing that we've been going in captivity, out of captivity, you know, these heathens ruling over us, you know, the Most High having favor on us, taking his favor from us. It was all to groom us to be judges of this eternal kingdom, this eternal righteous kingdom to come. So we will have balance, you know, the situation that we're in, you know, is for us to understand, you know, where the heathen are coming from. You know, because we've been mortals, you know, we've been, you know, subject to sin, you know, so we won't be unbalanced, you know, in judgment, you see. So we had to understand, you know, this come to this conclusion, you know, before we come into this, this glory, you know. So going back into it. All right. And how was shy? He was that, um, that example all right, that we follow, man, because Yahweh Shai, you know, he was faithful unto his purpose, unto death. All right, when you go to St. John 19 and um and 30, oh, I start 29, it says, Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon his silk, and put it to his mouth. When Yahweh Shah therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. You know, so we want to finish our course to get back to that glory. All right, because Yahweh Shah, he finished his course to get back to that glory. And that's what we have to do. You see? And it comes with understand our duty, understanding our purpose, man. All right. We don't even we don't look at death, you know, the same. We don't look at the opinions. Of the people in the earth, you know, we don't that 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 doesn't that doesn't that doesn't even factor in when it comes, you know, to understanding what we have to do, you know, as men to get back to their glory, the men of Israel of the hopeful elect, man. All right, so when you go to it, all right, that's why these things are written, you know, when this comes out all the time, you know, the Hebrews twelve and two, you know, I got this hanging up. You know, my study room, man, this is, a, you know, a key scripture. When you go to Hebrews 12 and 2, it said, Looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher, all right, which he was the pioneer of our faith, who, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne. You know, so we have to have a mind frame to despise the shame you know, because why we see the bigger picture. You see, we're finna come back into a glory. We're finna be the eternal, all right, kings, you know, of existence, man. Beginning with the earth, you know, but ultimately over all existence, man. You see, and we we understand these things, man. So before the glory, we know there's a suffering, but see, we, we get it now. Like I always say, the elect get it, and we're making ourselves ready. You see? So... When you go from now, all right, let's get, you know, because even you women, you know, you, you should be understanding your your duty, your purpose, you know. Well, what's your, all right, asset to the nation, man? You know, making yourself ready for that. You see, everyone's making themselves ready, man. The elect, you know, is making themselves ready, man. When you go to, all right, the book of um Esther, you know. Give a calling example, you know, for a um a spiritual meaning, you know, spiritual edification. All right. This is um Esther, the book of Esther, chapter two, verse twelve. It says, Now when every maid's turn was come to go into King Osiris, after that she had been twelve months according to the manner of women, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished to wit six months with oil and with myrrh and six months with and six months with um sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the women you see so that purification process for the elect men you know we're going through it you know which our purification is going to come through a lot of suffering man you see and, and and really with women, you know, in this society, taught them to be promiscuous, you know, to have no, 
you know, discipline, you know, to, 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 to live a life of pleasure. You see, when we was all taught, you know, to be undisciplined, live lives of pleasure, man. You know, but women was really given the liberty to destroy themselves, man. So now, you know, even the women, you know, the sincere women that believe, you know, they're going through a purification, you know, spiritual, you know, purification process, man. We all are, you know, because we're like, you know, the men are even liking, you know, into what, man, those virgins, you know, and we're preparing ourselves for the king. All right. And you women, you should have a mindset of preparing yourself. All right. For a king, but first you should understand your duty, all right, your obligation, you know, understanding the mindset, you know, that that, that, that you should be in, you know, to benefit, you know, <laughs> a king, man. You see, putting off that old way, you know, that promiscuous way, hey, right? you know, being disciplined, being chaste, you know, those things are going to pay out, and it's all going to pay out on both ends. You know, for us, you know, as men, you know, the power and authority that we got, you know, coming, you know, and it's for women being able to benefit, you know, in a society ran, you know, by your husbands, man. You know, so um, going from there, you know, because we have to fall in love with the discipline because we know what it's going to lead to, you know, and it's a fight. All right. Wisdom of Solomon 6. All right. And um, 17, it says, for the very true beginning of her, is the, in her speaking of wisdom, is the desire of discipline. And the care of discipline is love. Yeah, we have a desire of discipline, man. You know, we, we, we should desire discipline because we know what it's going to produce. All right. We know this, what it's going to produce. And see, this is just a phase. When we enter into the glory, we're going to get to enjoy, you know, pleasure. You see, which I'm gonna get that, and it says, verse 18, and the love is keeping of her laws, going back to what their duty. Now we understand our duty. All right, the house of David was meant to enforce for all the righteous laws of Yahweh by Shema Shai in the earth, man, and govern the earth with that. You see, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption, which is what immortality, and that's why the laws will be within us. And we will have immortal bodies, man. All right. And incorruption make it us near unto the most high. We'll be drawn back unto our power. You see, therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom, man. The desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom, you know, which is what? That glory, you know, that power, that authority, you know, everything that, 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 that men, all right, should want, man, you know comes to what the desire of discipline and the desire of wisdom and understanding our duty understanding our purpose and then we can come into the glory you know after the suffering we can come into the glory and the pleasure man you know and let's get there you see because we go to um psalms all right 16 all right and 11 and it says thou would show me the path to life, and that's Yahweh Shai. And how did he show us the path of life? By his life that he lived, man. You know, he didn't care about the current society and this world. He was dead to this world. You know, he was all about, you know, his kingdom that was to come. All right, and preparing, you know, the believers, all right, to be in the same mind frame, you know, to look forward and hasten it, the kingdom that's to come. That's why our glory is, man. And that's what we will enjoy, righteous pleasure. All right. It says, Thou will show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So we will get to enjoy pleasure in the kingdom, man. You know? But first, we got to, you know, understand what our duty is, you know, understand what our roles are, you know, understand. You know, have a desire for discipline, you know, have a desire for wisdom, you know, because the earth is going to be ran through wisdom, you know, wisdom going to be the thing in the world to come, man, not, you know, the the the, the, um, the lust of the flesh, all right, and because at the end of the day, there's a way to enjoy the earth, man, there's a way to enjoy pleasure, wine is not wicked, it's just the way, you know, 
um that is done in this in this current setup sex is not wicked it's just the way that it's done in this setup but in the kingdom we're gonna get to enjoy those things to the fullest man you know hey you women you know that are, that are holding yourself chase you see you're gonna get to enjoy that fully in the kingdom you know men we're gonna get to enjoy these things fully you see it ain't gonna be just a hobby like now sex is a hobby no it's gonna you know of course it's gonna feel way better than it does now and we're gonna be bringing forth a nation and we're gonna be nation building you know it's not just gonna be a thing to do you know it's gonna it's a great pleasure that comes with it you see but there's also a purpose for it man so now we're understanding you know our duty and our purpose now you know we're finna get ready to come into what their glory you know but it's a suffering you know that's in between there so we prepare ourselves to suffer to come into what man they their glory and then we get to enjoy these pleasures man you know so that's the point you know i hope you brothers and sisters edify until next time i say shout one